28th of September, Guinea's capital, Conakry, resembled a war zone. The sound of gunfire ringing out across the rooftops, fighting in the streets. But the people that the army and the police were fighting against were protesters. earlier, tens of thousands of people had gathered in the city centre, demanding change from the military rulers, led by Dedi Kamara, who had been in power since last December. Everyone is going to come out to say no to this man, because we do not want him to leave this country. We have gold, diamonds and oil, but we are one of the poorest countries in the world, even though we have everything. We are tired, we want change. The epicenter of the protests was the city's sports stadium. Here too, the police opened fire and the crowd dispersed in chaos. Rights groups say that the security forces didn't just kill protesters, but also raped women. When it was all over, the army stood guard outside the city mortuary to stop people from identifying family members. Inside, the bodies piled up. The military junta put the death toll at 57. Independent sources say that more than 150 people died and that the missing bodies were simply disposed of. It was the 2nd of October by the time people were invited to view the bodies, which were laid out in tents outside Conakry's Grand Mosque. For some, it was a day of even greater grief than the 28th of September, because what they had long suspected was finally confirmed. For others, the uncertainty continues. There are many people who didn't find their relatives. We are here, but they've thrown the bodies away. We couldn't find our parents. They disposed of a lot of bodies. Even though we came today, we didn't find the person that you see in this photo. The violence was widely condemned, with the international community promising action and the European Union calling for the arrest of military leader Daddy Kamara. Minister Qureshi here to the State Department. Uh, the indiscriminate killing and raping uh, that took place under government uh, control by government troops uh, was a vile violation of the rights of the people of that country. Uh, we have conveyed our reaction in the strongest possible terms. Um, Assistant Secretary Johnny Carson has uh, uh, made it clear to the representatives of the Guinea government with whom he has spoken uh, that uh, we uh, intend to uh, pursue appropriate actions uh, against uh, the current uh, administration in that country. Days later, as if nothing had happened, Daddy Camera held celebrations to mark Guinea's Independence Day. Later, during an interview in his office, he defended his right to stay in power. The Guineans will not regret the day when I took this power. All the Guineans, take note and write your note. The people of Guinea will regret the day that I leave power. Everyone in Guinea will. Take note of these, because you have to keep a record for history. After me, no one will be able to manage this army. Even within the army, if someone tried to make me live today, the soldiers will take up arms and start to fight amongst themselves, and no one in the civilian population knows how to control the army either. I am the vital link. Camera had initially been welcomed by many as a hero when he took advantage of President Lansana Conte's death in December 2008 to seize power. 
Conte had ruled Guinea with an iron fist for 24 years. In these images of protests in January 2007 are eerily reminiscent of the ones that took place this September. Back then, 186 people were killed by security forces. One of Kamara's first acts as the new ruler was to address business and political leaders to promise that the electoral process would continue and that he had no intention of standing. We are not thirsty for power. Regarding the parliamentary elections, it's up to you to get to work and tell us when you want them to be held. Elections were initially planned for this year, and even before Conte's death, electoral officials had begun the process of registering voters all over the country, something that continued under Camaro. But Guinea's opposition have become wary, now that it's rumoured that Kamara is planning to stand himself in the elections that have been scheduled for January 31st. Jean-Marie Doré is head of the UPG party, the Union for Progress in Guinea, which initially supported Kamara's coup. It seems like a conflict to me, although it shouldn't be, because when the cards were first dealt, Kamara was the referee who had everyone's confidence. Now if the referee plays on one of the teams, it becomes difficult. Doré was one of hundreds who were arrested and beaten during the protests, and while he was away from home, his house was ransacked. If I wasn't an optimist, I wouldn't be in politics. I'm extremely optimistic, in spite of the bumps that I've had on my head, in spite of the pain that I feel in my sides and in my kidneys. I remain optimistic that Guinea is capable of regenerating itself and that we will find the right solutions to all the problems in our country. But in Guinea right now, Doré's optimism is rare. In the Conakry neighborhood Koloma, an opposition stronghold, Mahmoud Barry mourns the death of his brother with relatives and friends from the neighborhood. He was at the stadium when they shot at him when he was there. They shot his legs. That was the first thing. And he was lying there on the ground without being able to move. The other protesters had to leave him there. They fled when they had gunshots and everyone ran away. The soldiers came and shot him in the heart and in the head. They completely broke his head. With them is Kenda Bailo Diallo, who runs a local civic education charity and is trying to compile a list of missing persons. Twenty-two-year-old Kadiatu Barry's husband disappeared on the 28th of September too, and was meant to fly back to the States the next day. She went to look for his body at the mosque, but didn't find him. On Monday he went out. He was meant to travel on the Tuesday. He had his own business to do, so maybe he went to the market, but we didn't see him again after that. We called his phone at 4 p.m. on the Monday, and a woman picked up. We asked her how she got hold of his phone, and she refused to tell us. We asked her where she is, and she said she works at the camp. Since then, his phone has been switched off. Although union leaders have organized more strikes since the protests, on the beach near the capital, everything seems normal. 
with people going about the trades that have sustained lives here for centuries. But although they live in a country that's rich in resources, they haven't seen the benefits. And it will take more than just an election to reverse the decades of dictatorship and corruption that have shaped today's Guinea.